In the Sundays that I have spent with you, I have told you very little about me, but today I want to share with you a little bit about me as we get into our sermon time for today. I am a little mountaineer, was born, raised, went to Little Mountain High School, graduated there, Newberry College, graduated there, and the Theological Southern Seminary and graduated there. Moved from that point into my life into the state of North Carolina for about eight years and then back to South Carolina and stayed over in prosperity for the rest of the ministry that, that I share. So the words that are in our gospel lesson for today mean a lot to me. Come and see. Is there anything good that can come out of Silver Street? Of course there is. You know there is. Look at us. Look at you and me. We are here today and we are going to go out and branch into all sorts of things that we might share the good news of the saving power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And yet sometimes we're a little bit timid, a little bit shy. We'd rather just read the Word of God rather than tell the Word of God. And this morning I want us to be aware that we need to tell the Word, not just read it. If I were to take my watch off this morning and lay it up here, would you begin to cringe? <laughs> I would. <laughs> I don't like that. That means I'm going to listen to something boring, probably, not inspirational, that would continue to give strength and power. Same thing was true when I was in seminary. I was not satisfied with my senior meditation as I delivered it. So from that point on, rather than read what I had written, I let God use my heart and my mind to prepare and then to turn loose and let you know the good news of the saving power of God. To me, that's where it is. If I were standing up here to read, I'd never get eye-to-eye -eye contact with any of you. I would never let you know that God loves you and that his strength and power is within you to carry the will and way and word. Samuel was one of those as he grew up, being dedicated to the Lord and serving in, in the sanctuary. There with Eli. And being called to carry the word of God, he was strong in following what God had called him to do. Come and see, you might say. Come and see Samuel and his words. If you haven't read the book of 1 Samuel lately, go back and read it. Be strengthened by the power of that word that comes to you and to me, as we know, love, and serve the Lord our God. But today, as we unfold our time and our talent today, I want you to think about something else that I think is sort of strange. What's in the name of a town? Would you be willing to tell other people that you come from the city of Edom? No, I wouldn't want to do that. That town in Nigeria decided to change its name and call it to the town of Plenty rather than the town of Edom. And so it is with us today that we are on the challenging brink of the Lord our God to know that we are challenged by the strength and power of that God to be not the city of Egypt, but the city of saints who have gathered together to proclaim the good news of the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ so that God brings to us that strength, that power. As you leave the sanctuary this morning, I hope that you will go out with more enthusiasm and vigor for the good news of the saving power of the Lord our God. For as he has called our saints before us into that eternal glory, so now he calls us to walk through life that we too might be in that eternal glory that he has planned and prepared for you and for me. So that our lights will shine. We will get forth that, that kingdom as we follow Jesus and know his will and his word. Yet aren't we somewhat like Nathaniel though? Can anything good come out of Nashville? As I can understand it, Nashville was a little poor town. It was not very prosperous as far as prosperity would go. But it was a town where Jesus was born and raised, excuse me, death for him, and then raised in Nashville. Therefore, therefore, God had chosen the lonely to be the inspiration to the world. You and I see ourselves as the lovely people of God, one individual at a time, 
sharing the good news of the strengthening power of God. And look what can happen. We who follow Jesus know that he spread throughout all of the world. His love, his mercy, his joy continue to be a part of what we are about. And yet it wasn't too difficult for Jesus to say, be careful. Careful what you say and careful what you do. The story is told of a young aspiring dancer who wanted to dance on Broadway. Practiced all of her young life. But her friends decided that it was not the thing for her to try to do, so they discouraged her. So much so that she decided to commit suicide rather than to know the strength and power of God at work. They say was the note that was left behind. If you and I be careful with what we say and how we go about it, we can either lift or we can downgrade those people who are around us. And I hope that what we're going to do is lift, not take away from it and downgrade, but make them stronger and more faithful to the will, the word, and the power of the Lord our God. Our lessons for today lead us in that direction, do they not? That if we are followers of the Lord's word, we will be like Samuel, and we will hear the call of God. We will answer, here I am, send me. You and I will be able to go wherever God calls us to proclaim that good news, that power, the strength, the love, and the mercy of the Lord our God. But you know we have to be a follower. So I invite you to come and see. Come and see Jesus. If you haven't learned to know him already, come and see Jesus through the Gospels as they are written. Learn to know that his strength and power goes with us every step of the way. That he is not going to desert us, but he will be there for us when troubles come, when happiness is a part of our life, when you and I can celebrate the joy of his kingdom, we can continue to be followers of Jesus, if we will but listen to his word, come, follow me. He issued that to his disciples, did he not? And you and I are those disciples of today who have heard the word, who are strengthened by the power of the Lord our God, who can be lifted in his kingdom here on earth to share with others that kingdom that is to come in the eternity of, of our world. So as you plan and as you prepare and as you go forward in, in the life, make sure that you use that eye-to-eye -eye contact of telling others the good news of the strengthening power of God. And that strength and that power of God will be wonderful for all of us. We're not all as gifted as Mary to sing and use a voice. But if you and I were strengthened by the power of God, we have a voice. A voice that we can use to speak the word of God, to share the will and the kingdom of God. Not all of us are piano or organ players as Marianne, but you and I have our own tune to sing and share and give with others that our lifestyle will be living examples of the kingdom of God. That second lesson for today sort of intrigued me. Intrigued me because of the fact that Paul was saying to his people, you need to walk the straight and narrow. You don't need to let yourself get sidetracked into something that has little to no meaning. Take care of your body and let your body be the one that will show others the kingdom of God. Yet I wonder, do we follow the call of God? I think we will. But you and I need to start, if we're not already, to stay forward, to be the followers of the Lord our God. To know that his strength, his power, and his love is ever about what we are going to do and will do as the kingdom of God continues to unfold. I am so proud of you here at Sell Street that you have reached out in many areas and departments. I can't begin to name all of the vocations that you have pursued and are fulfilling, but I can identify with the fact that we gathered here this morning are followers of Jesus and his word. And as we are followers of his word, we will branch out. We will move forward with that eternal kingdom that others may see through us the good news of the saving power of the Lord our God. So as you and I become trustworthy servants of the Lord, may we be like Philip and Nathaniel to come and see the good news of the power of God. 
But more like Nathaniel, I guess you might say, to recognize the Messiah, to identify him in our lives, and to know that through him we are a part of that which is to come. So become a trustworthy servant of the Lord our God. A trustworthy that servant that will let others see through you that eternal glory and that precious kingdom. I'd like to uh, sort of stop on a serious but unserious note. Sometimes I think that the reason I get called to fill in for people is because I'm an SS. I'm short and I'm stupid. <laughs> stupid because I say yes too often. I'm supposed to be retired. But I'm not retired. There is a calling that keeps us coming. No matter if my message is short, and I am short, we have that strength and power through our stupidity to tell the good news. The good news of the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ that we will not, we will not let others take us out of the, the, the ball game of knowing, loving, and serving the Lord our God. How many of you have a bat at home? How many of you would strike out if you had a good picture? How many of us would say, oh, we can't do that. Don't give me a bat. I can't hit a ball. I can't see it coming to start with. So how can I hit it if I don't see it coming? I offer you the ball game of life this morning. The ball game of eternity that God has planned for you and for me. And yes, we can all get home runs. All we need to do is to be faithful. Faithful to the Lord our God and to know that his strength and his power is with all of us. Let me also close on a serious note where I should have begun probably. I have read the following and I'm not sure they're all accurate, but the following. Names of towns from where people have come. For example, there's nothing Arizona. There's nowhere Colorado. There's um, hell for certain that's in Kentucky. And I don't know about the rest of these. But Booger Town, North Carolina, I tried to find that on the map and couldn't find it. So I don't know somebody made up a idol or, or name or that kind of thing. But I wonder if you and I would fit into the last one, the knocking still. I know. Hey, I'm from knocking still. Wouldn't that be unusual? We would probably think, first of all, of a battle, a fighting mouth that was going on. But I understand the reason they got this name was because of their moonshine. I want to tell you that we have a spiritual moonshine. Jesus himself, the Holy Spirit, who will help us to knock them out, that we can be truly the strengthening people of the Lord our God. So on this Sunday morning, as we continue upon the pathway of life, may it be that you and I will be the inspiration to others, to let them see through us the good news of the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. So short, stupid, whatever. However you want to term it, just know that we are rooted and grounded in the power and love of the Lord our God. We no longer have to just read what we want to say to one another. We can tell it. Tell it because we have heard it. The good news of the saving power of our Lord Jesus Christ. May he keep us in faith, in hope, and in love. Let him be in your guide throughout this coming week. That you will be the inspiration to others. That you will help them to see how strong it is to be a part of the one who will not let them down, but will bring them to that eternal glory that he has planned and prepared. Jesus is Lord. Let us rejoice and let us walk with him in the pathway of life.